gold, girls, and glory. It's been said that these three things have contributed to pulling more men down than anything else. If you have not heard yet, Brian Houston, who is the lead pastor and founder of Hillsong Church in Sydney, Australia, just yesterday, March 23rd, announced that he was going to be stepping down. Apparently, there was an investigation and there was some inappropriate activity that violated the church's quote-unquote code of ethics, and he is stepping down. And the timing of all of this is quite interesting because his resignation actually comes one day before the highly anticipated, long-awaited um, uh, uh, documentary, if you will, called Hillsong, A Mega Church Exposed. And if you want to catch that, you can catch it on Discovery Plus. Uh, I watched all three episodes, and this video is my review of that particular documentary. And uh, all I can say is that I've got a million thoughts in my mind, so I apologize ahead of time if this video seems all over the place. But um, listen, this documentary really, really exposed some of the things that are going on behind the scenes as it relates to Hillsong Church. Now, to organize my thoughts, just because this is how my brain works, I've summarized what I believe is the five major themes that this documentary brings to the surface or exposes about Hillsong Church that I want to talk about in this video. And to make it very easy for us, they all start with the letter M. Now, some of these I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on than others, but this is what I want to cover in this video. The first one is members, right? So I wanna talk a little bit about what was the experience of some of the individual members who were part of Hillsong Church and what we can learn as it relates to how churches should relate or uh, treat members of their churches. And then the second M is music, right? And so music played a huge part in Hillsong Church and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. And then the third one is money. So we're gonna look at what role money has played to the potential downfall of Hillsong Church and what it, role it can play also in the lives of individual ministers as well as churches as well. And so the fourth thing we're gonna look at is ministers or ministry in terms of how ministry was done, how certain ministers were treated, how they were elevated, how they were put on celebrity status, and all of this contributed to this church being exposed. And then the fifth and final one you don't wanna miss, we're gonna talk about manipulation. And we're gonna talk about how many churches, whether big or small, are guilty of manipulating their members to fulfill their vision for whatever it is they are trying to accomplish. So those are the five themes that I believe that this documentary really brings to surface, and I really wanna talk about those in this video. Now, before I get into these five, I just wanna make one major disclaimer, and that is the fact that this documentary is not and should not be seen as a representation of all mega churches, right? There are some churches that very well may have 10, 15, 20,000 members and they are healthy, they are strong, right? But this documentary exposes a specific church, the Hillsong Church, and we're gonna talk about that, okay? Now, the first M we're gonna look at, once again, is members. And what I wanna look at here, once again, my thoughts will probably be all over the place, but I wanna look at the experience of members and how members were treated at Hillsong Church. Now, related to members, the first thing that I want to say is that members of any church should not be judged based on the failed leadership of that church. So if you meet somebody who maybe they used to be at Hillsong Church, or maybe there's a song that you like to sing, and it was written by somebody who was deeply involved in Hillsong Church, or is still involved in Hillsong Church, we ought not pass judgment on that particular person simply because their church is experiencing a failed leadership. The second thing that I wanna say about the role that members play in a local church is we have to be very, very careful at, in terms of what we allow the media to cause us to believe because you can find any set of disgruntled former members of any organization if you look hard enough and you will be able to actually form and spin the narrative to make that 
story, say whatever it is that you want to say, right? So just keep that in mind as you watch this documentary. There's a lot of members who maybe were hurt or disappointed or something may have happened to them and they are sharing and expressing their story. Another point that I'm gonna make as it relates to members is that the deeper in leadership that you go, oftentimes the more that you will see. If you stay on the surface and you just attend and you hang out, you know what, you may not see a whole lot of stuff that's gonna bother you. But the more you rub shoulders with uh, leadership and you get deeper into it, once again, not every church. There are many, many, many very healthy churches, but unfortunately in some churches, you're not gonna see a lot of the corruption and all the stuff because you're just attending. You have to go deeper into like several levels down into leadership before some of these things are being exposed. Now, the next thing that I wanna talk about as it relates to members, which very well may blur the lines a little bit with the manipulation piece that I wanna talk about later, and that's the fact that oftentimes in these unhealthy, toxic church environments, members are being exploited with expectations of extreme service right? They, they're, they're being, the, the, the Bible is being held over their head with this idea of, you know what? Jesus gave everything for you. And the least you can do is give everything that you have back to Jesus. And it's this idea that, you know what? You need to just serve God. You need to put all of your other priorities, you know, uh, um, aside because at the end of the day, Jesus deserves your best. Jesus deserves all. And absolutely that's, that's true. But oftentimes, People are put in these no-win situations where if they choose not to serve, then they are, uh, as Hillsong put it, they are red-lighted. In other words, there's a there's a mark on them or you're blacklisted. You know what? Hey, uh, uh, you know, this person is not really sold out to the mission and the vision. And so therefore they're blacklisted. Or if you do choose to serve, you almost have to choose between having any sort of life outside of church, whether it's with your family or your educational pursuits or anything, or you just have to sell completely out to the church. And I don't think this is a healthy way for members to be treated in a local church context. Now, while it is true that the church should be built based on the volunteer services of its members, there are also some situations where what is being asked of this individual volunteer is so all encompassing that we need to pay these people for their services, especially when the church is making a hundred million dollars a year as was reported by uh, Hillsong Church. And the last thing that I'm gonna say about members and membership of a church is that I believe that many, many churches need to do a much better job at how they manage and how they relate and how they treat the members of their church, specifically people who served in a significant a staff position or a significant volunteer position because here's the reason why. The reason why I single this group out is because these people are often the ones that have given the most money and the most time to the church. And so if we don't treat them well, particularly when they choose to leave or whether they are disgruntled or whatever, it results in documentaries like this where people are basically sharing out how hurt they were because someone in the church did not care for their soul. Now, the second M that I wanna talk about in this review of this documentary, and I think it's the second theme that really emerged, was the role of music in Hillsong Church. Now, it is no secret that Hillsong basically uses its music as a gateway to kind of draw people into their church. As a matter of fact, I bet many of you who are watching this, you might be very familiar with the music of Hillsong, but you may not even know who Brian Houston is. He is the pastor and the owner and the uh, uh, founder, if you will, of the Hillsong Church of Sydney, Australia, right? But the, their, their goal is to use music to try to draw you in to their worship experience. So we must be careful not to overlook an unhealthy, toxic church environment simply because the worship is so good. As a matter of fact, one of the quotes that really stuck out to me in this documentary says, it's easy to mistake emotional manipulation for a movement of God. 
Now, with all of that being said about the worship music at Hillsong, let me just say this. Not every songwriter connected to Hillsong Church should be judged based on, once again, the failed leadership of that church. If that song makes you feel closer to God, if that is a song that you enjoy singing, if that is a song that, most importantly, is theologically accurate and paints a proper picture of God, then you know what? You should continue to listen to that particular song. Now, the third theme that I really think that this documentary really, really discusses, and this is one we want to camp out on just a little bit, is money, right? So, as a matter of fact, in the documentary, they said that there's about six different income streams, if you will, that uh, Hillsong Church has, and they all start with the letter C. Uh, the first is church, right? So, just church attendance, people coming, people giving, people tithing, sacrificial giving, and then CDs, they sold their music, right? And so uh, there's another revenue stream there. And then cinema, different movies, different productions and things like that. And then conferences that they would host. They would also bring people in from all over the world. And then concerts that they would have, right? That was a huge, huge way to bring people in. And then colleges, they have a leadership college where they bring people in and they train you how to minister in the Hillsong way. And so one of the things that this documentary highlighted is the fact that every church and every church leader must find the healthy balance between need and greed. Because you know what? Money has a way of changing an individual. You can start off with the purest intentions of wanting to do ministry. But when you start to make money, when you start to see that you can actually use this thing called ministry to actually make money and get rich and be famous and have power and have possessions and have all these things, it has the power to change who you are at the very core. And so that's why this documentary really brought to surface that the church really needs to be careful about navigating between greed and need. Listen, every organization and every church needs money. Our organization, which is nonprofit, we need money as well to be able to purchase equipment, to be able to pay staff, to be able to pay the person who is leading the organization so they don't have to work a second job so they can focus exclusively on doing the work that God has called them to do. Nobody's talking about that. We get that. But when we start talking about misusing and mismanaging the funds that people are giving to the church with the expectation that these funds are being used for one thing, and then in reality, they are being used for something totally different to fund the lavish lifestyle of its ministers and its church leaders. That's a whole nother thing. And one of the things that the documentary mentioned is the fact that um, you know many of the leaders had these debit cards that were being funded with the tithe money of uh, of the members and basically a lot of the, the ministers on staff had this carte blanche where they were able to go and spend money on purses, on rental cars, on um, um, the shoes that were costing like five, six hundred dollars and a thousand dollars and things like this. Also, Carl Lentz, who we're going to talk about in just a moment, who is the who was the uh, head pastor of Hillsong, New York City. Uh, you know, they talked a lot about, you know, the clothes that he was wearing, that some of them were like $10,000 for a vest and the shoes were like thousands of dollars and things like this. Guys, if you're a minister and you're a ministry and you're mismanaging funds like this, all I'm going to say is you're going to answer to God because this is not what a minister or ministry should be all about. Whenever you see people who are living these flashy lives, right? They're, 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 uh, they're flashy in terms of their dress and they're showing off to everybody, you know, Hey, look at what I have on. Look at how much this costs. Like that is the lavish lifestyle that I think turns people away from church. Now, with that being said, because I always like to be biblical and balanced, let me just also say this, be careful about judging a minister based on how much money you think he has. The reason why I say this is because we need to not ask the question, should a minister or pastor be wealthy? That's the wrong question to ask, right? The answer is, well, it could possibly be. But the correct questions that you should be asking is, number one, how is this wealth being obtained? And then second of all, how is this wealth being used? Because if this minister is extremely wealthy, but the way they are obtaining their wealth 
is by honest means, by working hard, maybe by investments, maybe by creating a product that people are purchasing, maybe by writing a book, maybe by getting something patented or whatever it is, then who are you to judge that person and say that person cannot benefit financially from that just because they hold the title as of a minister, right? And then also, how are they using that money? At the end of the day, if they make $60 million a year, but they give away $59 million to everyone else, then you can't judge that person because they have a lot of money because you need to look more at, once again, how they obtained it, and second of all, how are they using it? And because you don't necessarily know either one of those things with absolute certainty, oftentimes, be careful not passing judgment on a minister who very well may on the surface seem like they're doing well, but you don't know the specifics of their financial situation. And so every minister and every ministry needs to guard against this insatiable desire for more, for more, for more, right? More buildings, more bucks, and more bodies. And it is this that we must consistently wrestle against and we must consistently ask ourselves, is what I am doing for the glory of God or, or is it to bring myself glory? Now, the fourth M that we're gonna look at that I believe that this documentary really brings to the surface is ministers. Certain ministers, how we select certain ministers, uh, how we relate to certain ministers, how we view certain ministers, right? And so the first thing that I wanna say about this is that charisma should never be a substitute for character. Oh man, I cannot tell you how important this is. Because whenever you watch this documentary, what seems to be clear is that Pastor Brian Houston seemed to have appointed or selected Pastor Carl Lentz for, from, uh, for Hill, Hillsong, New York City, more so, more than likely on the idea of he is going to be a charismatic leader. He is going to be able to be a great speaker. He's gonna relate well to the people. He's good looking. That's gonna draw people in. He has a nice figure. He has a beautiful wife. All of these external things, right? But what is the primary thing that you need to look at whenever you're appointing a minister or whether you are a minister is not your charisma, it's not how flashy you are. It's not how gifted you are. It's your character because your character is only going to take you as far, right? Uh, or excuse me, your, your charisma will only take you as far as your character will keep you. You can have all the charisma in the day, but if your character is not right, eventually, just like Carl Lentz, just like Brian Houston, just like the whole bunch of people that I can mention that I'm not going to mention in this video, it is going to be exposed over time. And when it is, it's going to be a huge fallout and it's going to affect lots of people's lives. The next thing I'm going to say to the ministers is that issues that are not dealt with in the past have a way of rearing their ugly head or coming to the surface later. One of the things that came out is that we know about Carl Lentz's uh, adulterous affair with uh, Ranin Karim, I believe her name is, and we know all about that. And you will be ignorant to think that that was the first time that this brother was dealing with inappropriate behavior. No, the reality is that this had been a consistent issue in his entire life, even in his own admittance. He admits to being a player. He admits to struggling with lust and struggling with these different things, right? And so if you don't get certain things in your life in check, and I'm not just talking to ministers, I'm talking to any Christian. If you don't get these things under control, listen, when you start to have power and fame and authority and all these different things, all that does is going, it's going to maximize, it's going to, it's going to blow up, if you will, uh, the struggles that you have privately and it's going to become public. And the last thing that I'm going to say to the ministers is the fact that the Bible is true. Pride comes before the fall. And this one is really, really important to me because when I look at many ministers in the church today, whether they're online or in person or whatever, the way they carry themselves is not in a way that 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 communicates humility. If I'm just being honest, if I can be blunt with y'all, right? A lot of it is flashiness. A lot of it is look at me. A lot of it is when you see them on stage, even the way they preach, even the way they conduct themselves, the way they carry themselves, their whole demeanor, their whole persona is communicates this idea of pride and arrogance and haughtiness and flashiness and look at me and narcissism and attention on me and all of that. 
And I'm just going to be honest with you, like it's a turnoff. If you are a Christian minister, you should always seek to carry yourself with humility. That doesn't mean weakness, but it means humility, right? When you're on stage and you're and you're speaking, you can use your God-given personality, yes, but make sure that it doesn't come off to everyone else as being cocky and arrogant. Speaking once again of Carl Lentz, when you look at this brother, I mean, he is flaunting all sorts of flashy, expensive clothes. He's uh, walking around with his shirt off and things like that, taking pictures, right? Like showing off his physique and things like that. Like all of these things are signs of pride. And like I said earlier, if these things aren't held in check, it ultimately leads to the downfall of that minister and oftentimes, sadly, that ministry. Now, the last M that I wanna talk about today is the word manipulation. And I have made some videos on this and maybe another word you can use here is abuse because oftentimes what these churches do is that they misuse their authority, they misuse their power to manipulate or brainwash people who may not be strong enough to think on their own and they use them as pawns and they use them to get free labor and all these different things that this documentary really brings to the surface. Let's circle back now for just a moment to these unhealthy expectations that many churches put on volunteers. If they can brainwash you into thinking that, you know what, it's a privilege that you should be able to do this. You don't, you don't have to do this. You get to do this, right? Matter of fact, that's one of the sayings that they said that uh, was prevalent around Hillsong Church. I can't believe we get to do this, right? It's this idea that, you know what, you should be thanking God that we choose you to work uh, or volunteer for 20, 30 hours a week. And what happens is they use these fear tactics oftentimes to evoke fear in you that if you don't do as they say, if you don't submit to that church's leadership, then you are going to be outcast. You are going to be blacklisted. You're not going to get certain opportunities to use your gift. You're not going to be able to speak. You're not going to be able to lead worship. You're not going to be able to do this. You're not going to be able to serve here or there because you know what? You are not submitting to the church's vision and you are somebody who is rebellious. All of this stuff, y'all, are signs of unhealthy, toxic church environment. And if these things are going on in your church, you need to look for a way to get out because you are being manipulated and brainwashed and ultimately being misused and abused. We are conditioned to put our trust in leadership. And you know what? When that church is a healthy church, then you know what? Everything is good. You should submit. You should fall in line. But woe is you and woe is me when that church is unhealthy because if you fall in line and you submit, you could be submitting to something that God is not intending for you to do. This documentary highlighted the fact that this church wanted to control every single aspect of people's lives, right? So things like who they dated and how they dated and how long they should date before they kiss and how long they should date before they say, I love you. And you know what? If you all kissed before this time, then you guys need to be uh, break up for six months and then we'll reevaluate your relationship. Like total control, like these churches oftentimes that are being, that are unhealthy are trying to play the role of the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers. Once again, should the church be available for accountability? Yes. Should the church be available for leadership and guidance and advice? Yes. But when it gets to the point where that church believes that they are playing the role of the Holy Spirit in the lives of a believer, and they are literally wanting to know every single detail of your life so they can manipulate you, they can control you and things like that, that is a sign of an unhealthy church. So if you are part of a church that is using these unhealthy, toxic manipulation tactics to try to control you, my friend, my advice would be for you to get serious about looking for a different church. Now, with all of that being said, I would love to hear from you. I really strongly encourage you to take some time to check it out on Discovery Plus. Uh, you can even get a free trial to check it out if you want to do that. Uh, there's three episodes that you can check out. Uh, it's called Hillsong, a mega church exposed. Uh, it's a documentary. 
And uh, if you've had any experience at all with church, good, bad, or ugly, uh, I think that you'll really enjoy uh, watching this. And, uh, and so just know that there's no perfect church. There's no perfect church leader, but there are some churches that are healthier than others. And my prayer for you is that even though you may see all of the stuff that is going on in churches and people leaving and things like that, that first of all, your faith would not be deterred and you won't be putting these people up on these pedestals like these celebrity pastors and all this stuff that we see going on, right? But you'll put your faith ultimately in God because he is the only one who is perfect and you won't lose faith in the church simply because there are some churches out there that are unhealthy because for every unhealthy church, I believe that there are still several healthy churches that you can be a part of. So I'd love to hear from you. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.